All right, guys, so I'm back with another video. So one of the main uh, things that I fixed was um, his leg locking, that leg locking problem where his feet were floating a little. I'll explain to you why that was happening. So in the last update, I swapped out the neutral pose uh, for the layering with the uh, UEFN's idle pose. I don't need to... I don't seem to need to do this for the crouching unless you specifically want crouching specific poses. And some of you may, if you want crouching specific poses, then you need to add a, a pose that where this blends to that other pose whenever it goes from standing to idle, but then you'll need all your, all your crouch poses would need to be in the crouch. It would need to have him in that crouch pose. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to explain that to you. Uh, this temporary fix right here is currently disconnected. It's been deprecated. Now that we've got the, the proper neutral pose, uh, this uh, that problem with the fingers is no longer an issue when we're additively overlaying. Those problems with the fingers were being caused by the fact that the ALS neutral pose had his fingers in a different pose than what he was, his fingers were in and oriented at on the idle pose for this character. So there was a mismatch there and that's what was causing that along with some other issues. So I made these poses so that he's not leaning over. Uh, if you now guys, I can't make everybody happy. There's always going to be somebody to complain about something. Now, there were people complaining about him leaning over dramatically on their characters and stuff like that. So I decided to not have him lean over. If you want him to lean over, there's it's three poses, guys. Go in there and modify the three poses uh, so that he's leaning over. Now, there was another problem right here. And this problem, I still have to investigate. I've got a... Um, I've got a temporary fix. It doesn't completely fix it, but it makes it look a little bit better. But basically, when he was holding the rifle, he would come over. Uh, you'll see uh, before, and actually, I can I can break it so that you can see what happens. Let me see. And I'll refactor this too, guys. By the way, I was just... I had this here set up like this, and I was thinking, well, I'll discuss that uh, here in, after a minute. Let me see. Oh, I have to compile it one second. There we go. Oh, what just happened? Oh, okay, so apparently, <laughs> Apparently, compiling the blueprint causes a, a weird problem where he goes through things. So you seen that weird jolting uh, on the left hand? Yeah, that was caused by the IK snapping back. And it becomes even more apparent when you do it in slow-mo. You seen what happened there? Yeah, so this uh, is a temporary fix until I, I've had time to investigate a, a more proper solution. It'll be something similar. I'm just going to refactor it so that there's not two nodes there. I want to reduce the overhead of the code. But now you'll see if I do this. It still does it a little bit, but it's not quite as bad. So I'll, I'll investigate how to extend this time, basically. I need the IK to be disabled until he hits the ground, but I don't want to disable the IK when he's in the air specifically 
because if I disable the IK only when he's in the air, then when you jump, you, his hand will come off the rifle. So uh, that's going to be a little tricky. Anyway, I'll investigate that and I'll probably have that fixed in the next update. So contextual animation scene. Uh, you've seen I did a, a whole series on uh, setting that up with the pistol. I've decided to add that. This is the same logic that I did in the video. I just made this a, a function, the one that the part that handles the actual querying of the the scene actor and uh, handling the the character stuff and the uh, relative offset calculation and the focal point. And then we have this here. So. Yeah, so so this is only set up on the player right now, and I'll um, and you'll see that the player has to have the contextual anim scene actor, and so does the <clears throat> so does the the item you're interacting with. Now, in actuality, for this setup in particular, we don't actually need a contextual anim scene actor on our player, but later on down the road. I'm going to show you guys how to actually use contextual item scene actors like they were meant to be used. This is like a, a use case that I came up with and you can use them this way. You don't necessarily have to, uh, but it does give you a proper, it does give you proper information on where things need to be, uh, which is why it's also, which is why it's also uh, nice to, to uh, have them for Set, setups like this. So um, some of this is going to be refactored. For example, I'll probably move uh, this, uh, the loading of this uh, scene asset data, I'll make that automated and I'll move this over to the data, the character specific data assets again. So each specific character could potentially have their own. If you wanted uh, a specific character to have his own version of that, then you would be able to. Uh, that's why I'll, I'll do it that way uh, in the next update. I'll do that as well as try to find a more proper uh, fix uh, for this. One that actually completely prevents that issue when you're uh, traversing over a high jump. When you go to pick up the pistol, uh, there'll be a delay there. The AI controller will take uh, over. Uh, it's the only way to get actual proper uh, positioning and uh, uh, placement. Now, I, I was a little lenient on uh, how I handled that because in actuality, you're probably going to be uh, approaching this from multiple different uh, from multiple different angles, as you can see here. So that's the reason why I did that. It doesn't look bad on uh, these characters either just out of the box. I'm not using hand IK, but you'll see it's pretty close. So if you don't like that delay, all you have to do is right here on this, copy this and just paste it here and bypass it. That's all you have to do, okay? So it's not that difficult. I won't be able to please everybody. Some people are gonna not like things, okay? That's going to happen. Some people will not like some things. Not everybody likes chocolate, okay? Not everybody uh, likes coffee. It's just a fact of life. I can't make this so that everybody's happy with it. Uh, so I'll show you how to undo stuff if you don't like it. Now, if we come over here and we open up this, you'll see that I rearrange things a little bit. I no longer have the item handling uh, sub uh, <clears throat> something here. Instead, I uh, brought these out and I made these separate. So the pickup is obviously going to have anything to do with pickup that's in here. And then we have our holster and drop logic here. These are the examples I set up for you guys. Um, that will be up to you to handle on your own how you want, depending on your needs. I've got these examples here. They're not hooked up. 
but currently I'm just doing it by index. Uh, this part right here is going to have to be handled by you because I can't predict how you want to handle the drop uh, slot logic. I may or may not add an actual official example of this uh, later on, uh, kind of like what I did with the slot manager. But the, the thing is, is uh, I don't know if you're going to have an inventory uh, system where you can pull up, where you can pull up a little box with this inventory and you click and drag and stuff gets dropped out there or, and there's so many different ways that you could drop this, which is why I have all these different helper functions for dropping it in different ways. So it's kind of hard for me to to say exactly what people's needs are going to be, but I might try to make this more uh, formal. Right now, I, it's not. It's just there, and I'm showing an, an example of how you could drop something. But anyway, <clears throat> so I might improve this in a later update. But yeah, that's basically the rundown, guys, uh, and I will see you in the next video.